Utopian Chronicles, Multidimensions, Episode 6. The forces fight off beasts and plan their next moves. In the back, back in the dimensional planes, there were many different ecosystems. Each of the ecosystems had its own beasts and weather patterns. In the rocky dry lands, where the days were long and the nights were cold, and the land made of limestone grew one above the other. This gave the impression that there were once giant steps that giants of old used to climb on. This was a part of the Hawthorne territory. Ambani and Maljin went to scout the area for monsters that were troubling the local villages. Maljin sweating and getting bit by sandflies. How could how could you just be out here enjoying it, Abani? Ouch! Got it. Abani. This is my second home. Outside of the capital. Mao. Besides, we are not just scouting beasts, but enemies as well. There are more than just us four kingdoms. Now nah, you know. Maljin, yeah, I know. That Chevalier guy finally came out of his castle. And all these pests started showing up, standing up and pacing. Not to mention all of the dead bodies they've been collecting. Creepy, Albani. Well, rumor has it that they were many of those new guys came from. Mountain. Raising the dead? How could you win a war if your foe comes back to life? Perhaps that's why King Yanni wants peace with everyone. Ambani gets up from the ground. Correct. You are my friend. He isn't like our old tyrant king that you slain. Maljin looks glum. Ambani, hey, hey, no need for that now. I'm actually thankful for it. Although some might not like it, however. How you sided with the royals to do it. Maljin, you mean the Jack Knight, Nathan. He is the only one besides myself that served the king, still in service to the kingdom. I only wish to help our lord, our new king, achieve his dream of peace with all Cardinal. Then, just maybe, then Nathan would forgive me. Nabani, don't worry, Lord's willing. We will succeed. The two of them would finish their mission. Having slain the giant digging worms that roamed the land. Next would be the Spade Kingdom. Tons of vegetation overgrew on the rock faces of the land. Green moss and other green, brown and purple plants had taken over. Trees as tall as mountains had all appeared from all across the universe due to the time disruption and the, time and the dimensional planes opening up to the universe. In the main castle of the spade, Adrian Ban, Legion, Yordan and Reckley were all training in the castle courtyard. Adrian. It's impressive how this land has transformed from barren to lush, luxurious, and beautiful overnight. Adrian sits on the wall looking on. Adrian standing. Well, do you want me to bring you the fair maiden of the Ace Knights some flowers? Adrian, annoyed. You know I don't like flowers, Adrian. Besides, I must... Be tough and strong to the other ace knights but I'm worthy of succeeding my father before me yoga walking towards from yes your father was the pride of our kingdom I pray you have his strength no even more than his strength if he want to be the top cardinal state not to mention father the floors might return soon legion Jumping off the wall angrily, 
Damn them the floors. Adrian, clutch, clutching her sword tightly. It was him who killed my father on that planet, Utopia, in his treachery. See lost stories, Utopia. I vow that his blood shall stain this blade. Cliffs lifts her sword and closes. And lifts her sword close to her face. Reckly overhears their conversation and walks by. Well, none of you would get to your dream goals by talking alone. Picks up his spear. Come, let's train. The top officers of Spade began to train with much velocity as their cool and calm prince, Jason, looked on from the castle balcony. Next, near Lake Tan, was the J.S. Sasa enjoyed the peaceful scenery as they set up camp and gathered and trained troops. J.S. John, father, it would seem that the Meta would not be coming to join us. J.S. the third, unfortunate, my son, gets up of his head tent to greet his son. It seems our scouts have discovered that this place where we are is called the New Dimensional Plains. I never heard of such a thing on a planned utopia. See law stories. Two utopian story. Two utopian chronicles. J.S. John. Perhaps this what they call the dimensions. It is said that if one conquers it, then the universe will be theirs. J.S. J. Der. Excited. Yes! This what this was what I wanted to hear. It seems that those the floors are not here. This land will be mine soon. J.S. John. Yes, Father. J.S. J. The Bird. Gather men to our cause. And together we will take the universe. By the way, where's our source of friend? J.S. John. He said he went hunting. J.S. J. The Third. He better be careful. There are mighty beasts in these parts. J.S.J. the third. J.S.J. the third was right about this as they were surrounded by untamable giants that round around the area. Sasa with a giant hand axe and a few men went giant hunting. These giants were a threat to their forces and for recruiting deterrent. After weeks of slaying, all of the giants were game, were gone. The Sasa returned to camp, triumphant. However, he had forgotten one thing. J.S. John, Master Sasa, you have returned with the hunting meal. Sasa, embarrassed. Oh, that's what I forgot. My bad. J.S. J. Face palms. Next, we have the... Next, we have the uh, Weasler and his gang were terrorizing the local village and were run, running things. They taxed the peasants more than they could pay and would often take their food as punishment or beat them. Shanice, the woman in the group, controlled the men and hold them back from harming the local women. Still, the women of the village were forced to cook and clean for Weasler, for Weasler's gangs and thugs against their will. Unknown to them, this village was in the Caribs territory. King Ace Knight, Corolos himself, and Langulus got the royal decree from King Leclerc to chase away or slay the gangsters. Langolas was pleased just to do his duty as a knight. However, Carlos wanted to use this as an opportunity to boost his swordsmanship and to be praised by the common folk. Back at the village, Rizalo was still pissed at Navi for jacking up their scan. Weasel, 
You, I'll give you one more shot to make it up to me, Navi. One more hiccup, and you will no longer be my right hand man, Navi. Bowing his face repeatedly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, my lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You count on me. Shanice frantically runs into the room. Weasler, we got a problem. Weasler, Shanice, baby, what's the matter? Stands out concerned. Shanice, it's it's those car guys. They they, well, they heard that we were we were here. That we heard about. They 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 come here and a large army. The local slave people rejoiced in front of their captors as Weasler froze in place. Navi gets up. Boss, Shab Shanice. Should I order the men to fight or prepare to retreat? And suddenly, as Weasler heard the word retreat, he took off like Usain Bolt and skipped town. When Colossus, Colossus, Colossus and Langulus arrived, Navi was determined to repay his boss. So he ordered the men to protect their escape. He showed bravery in the face of an elite army and the brilliant swordsman of Corollas. Corollas. Ah, they run. Ensure that they take nothing that belongs to the people with them. Languas. Yes, sir. Chinese. Running. Drop the gold and run. Your lives are worth more than these stretches. With this, the gang was expelled from the countryside, and both Colossus and Langros were praised for their bravery and heroism. Navi and Shanice caught up with their boss, who ran a mile straight without stopping. He was laid out flat in the back, on his back, Weasler, deep breathing. <laughs> Thank you, Navi. You too, Shanice. Let us never invade town again without allies and our own, okay? Shanice, fine. Thanks for the good leadership, boss. Rosa eyes. Navi, I hope you're okay. Weasler gets up to thank Navi. About before, what I did, what you did for me today was perfect. You are forgiven, my friend. Hugs him. Navi, a tear of joy dropped down from his face. And lastly, we have... <laughs> 